This B textbook and exercise science video is for Unit 2 Functional Anatomy, and we are looking at the skeletal system, specifically D3, the location of skeletal bones. But we're actually purely in this video focusing on the five types of bone. So could you, for example, name the bones um, of the body, but could you also know what type of bone they are? and therefore what their main function is, how they're structured and what their main function is. And that's really what we want to try to address in this video. You may know that these are the five types of bones. So long bones, short bones, flat bones, sesamoid bones and irregular bones. One important thing for you to note is that these are categorized by their shape and not by their size. For example, the femur is a long bone. It happens to be large. The point is it's longer than it is wide. The little bones of the feet and the hands are also long bones. Even though they're small, the shape of them is longer than they are wide. So they are categorized as a long bone by shape. But let's work through each of the types of bones. And what you'll need to know is how are they structured for the function that they have and what examples would you know? So first of all, let's look at short bones now. Short bones, they, there are little phrases that I really want you to learn working through this content. And I'll try to exaggerate them so you know. The, the top row really is what I want you to learn. Short bones are cuboid in shape. That means they're the same length, height and width, a bit like a dice, a bit like a cube. And that dice or that cube is has got compact bone on the outside and inside it's made of cancellous bone that honeycomb holy bone tissue what that means is they're small and light but really 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 strong because the main job of these bones is weight bearing strength shock absorption if you think about it the bones of your heels are short bones your tarsals they have to deal with so much impact and weight of your whole body plus anything you're carrying or if you jump and land you know they deal with all of that shock so short bones are short bones are really strong they are compact cuboid like a, like literally like a dice only need to know two and those are the carpals the wrist bones not any of your fingers or your palm make that really clear, just the carpals, which are your wrist bones, and the tarsals, which are your ankle bones, not the sort of ball of your foot or your toes, just the tarsals. That's all you need to know, carpals, tarsals, as your examples of short bones. Moving on to flat bones then. So let's have a look at the information. Flat bones have a couple of functions. Now, flat bones, you can see the scapula is a huge surface area. It's fairly thin. You can't see it sideways, but it's actually quite thin. Your cranial bones are lots of flat bones that are fused together by fibrous joints, but they are flat bones. Your sternum is a fat, flat bone. OK, all fairly thin and structurally then large, flat surface area that matters. Um, the actual structure of the bone is, I, I think of it like a cancellous bone sandwich. You've got a thin, compact layer on top. You've got a thin, compact la bone layer on bottom. And you've got cancellous tissue inside, like, a, like the sandwich filling. So if you imagine this one cranial bone is like a thin, cancellous bone sandwich. But why are they like this? Why are they structured with a big, flat surface area? Because their two functions are this protection of internal organs. The sternum protects your internal organs, your lung, your heart, your cranial bones protect your brain. That's protection of internal organs. But also that big surface area is really important for having muscles and ligaments to attach to. So for example, the scapula, big surface area, has lots of muscles attached to it via tendons, has a lot of ligaments attached to it as well. The flat bones you might need to know of, as I've said, are the sternum. Now, bizarrely, ribs are also classified. I don't think this diagram particularly shows it well, but whilst they're not very big, they are kind of flattish in shape. OK, so they're not round. They're flattish in shape. Your scapula, as I said here, and your cranial bones. Know those. Your pelvic bones are also flat bones. 
irregular bones then. So irregular bones are a little bit different in that there's no set pattern to what they're shaped like. The best example, and really the only example I want you to learn, are vertebrae. So your vertebral column is a series of vertebral bones. Each one of these bones is an irregular bone. Now, even within the vertebral column, they are designed slightly differently. So you can see this is a lumbar vertebrae, one of the big ones down at the base of your back. This is a thoracic vertebrae. You can see it's a different shape. It's smaller. And these are sort of chest cavity, thorax level. And then we get to our cervical vertebra up here. There you can see are much smaller, I've got different, different holes, bumps, notches, you know, quite different in shape. And that's the point of irregular bones. They are very specifically structured for where they are and the job they've got to do. So how are you going to learn what to say? So I think the key thing for you to learn to say here is that Irregular bones are specialised in structure for the location where they are. OK, so they're not the same. They are specifically designed for where they are. For example, lumbar, thoracic and cervical vertebra are structured differently because they are have different jobs. The lumbar vertebra need to be huge, chunky things because they have to cope with a lot of tension, stress, impact with all our movements and holding our body up. The, th the cervical vertebra don't need to be like that. They are much smaller because not a lot of impact goes down through our, our sort of neck and our, you know, the top of our spine. But what you might notice is that all of the vertebra have this hole. You can see it's called a vertebral foramen. It's a hole. And that hole runs up through all of these vertebra. And the function of that hole, that structural component, is for the spinal cord to be protected. So it sits inside all your vertebra. So this is the really the only example I want you to learn of irregular bones, your vertebrae. I think then what you can do is show off that you know even these vertebrae are designed specifically for different jobs, for coping with big forces and shock absorption, for smaller, more refined movement. The whole is for protecting the spinal cord. And the other thing is these three, so this would be the front of you. If we were looking down on this vertebra, this is the front, this is the left, this is the right, this is the rear. These processes, these spinous processes, sticky out bits at the back, are what you can feel going up your back. And why do we have these processes? We have them for attaching muscles to and attaching ligaments to. So these processes are designed specifically for that job. So going back to what you need to know, irregular bones are specifically designed for the job and location. Wherever they are, they're designed, you know, specifically for that purpose. This is the best example. Vertebra, for example, are designed and structured with a hole to protect the spinal cord and with processes for muscle attachment and ligament attachment. So the fourth type of bone you need to know is a sesamoid bone. The nice thing about this is there's only one you need to know. Um, there are others in the body, but there's really only one that we're going to learn about. And that is the patella. So this is a knee joint. There's your tibia, your lower limb. So your lower half of your leg. This is your femur, your thigh, and this is your knee joint. So what is a sesamoid bone? It is structured with almost like a seed. Um, sesame seed is perhaps a, a thing to remember. So an oval seed shape. So it's it's oval. So it's a version of a short bone. It's not cuboid like most short bones. It's more oval in shape. And this kind of shows it in this image over here. So your patella is oval in shape. The key thing about it structurally, though, is that this patella is embedded inside this tendon. So it grows or exists within this tendon. And that's important because what it helps um, with what its job is, is to prevent friction between different surfaces, different um, bones and muscles. Um, and it also makes movement easy. If you think about all the movement that happens at your knee joint without this patella there, um, allow, giving for some kind of protection, these internal components are quite, quite at risk, really. So the patella is an example of a sesamoid bone. Sesamoid bones are embedded in 
tendons. They are oval or seed shaped. They're, they're, a, they're a variation of a short bone and they are quite smooth. They have smooth surfaces because obviously if we a lot of movement is going to slide over these sesamoid bones. So the function of sesamoid bones is to prevent friction, to prevent two things that rub past each other, causing damage to each other. And again, the only one you need to learn is the patella. And this brings us on to the final bone that we need to know about. And that is the long bone. So the long bone, hopefully we know a little bit about because of previous topics and previous videos when we looked at bone growth. But we need to know the structure, the shape. And if you remember, short bones are the same length, the same width, the same height. That was the way, you know, they're as long as they are wide is what you would, could use to describe short bones. For long bones, the phrase that you must learn is that long bones are longer than they are wide. They are longer than they are wide. OK, so that's just a little distinguishing thing. And remember, they're in this type of bone category, not because of their size, but because of their shape being longer than they are wide. From the previous video on bone growth, we learned about all the components that make up a long bone, all the things that you need to know. And I'm not going to go through those again now. That hopefully is knowledge that you have already, but you might need to identify these or explain what job they do or what they're structured like. What's the function of long bones? Well, again, hopefully we know they act as levers to allow movement. They store minerals for us, particularly calcium and phosphorus. They produce blood cells, especially red blood cells in the red bone marrow, but they also produce white blood cells and platelets. And obviously they're essential for keeping us supported and giving us some structure, else we'd be a blobby mess on the floor. And there are lots of long bones that you must know the names of. Generally speaking, long bones you will, be, you will find in the limbs, so in your arms and in your legs, in your shoulder girdle as well. So the clavicle is a long bone. So the humerus radius ulna and the metacarpals and phalanges of the arm are long bones. The femur, tibia, fibula and in the feet, the metatarsals and phalanges are long bones. Remember that the carpals of the wrist and the tarsals of the ankle are short bones. So let's just finish by looking at a couple of exam questions and the ways in which you might need to show off this knowledge. Here's one. So table one shows a type of bone and an example of that type of bone. So it's given you the sesamoid type of bone and it says that the example of this is the patella. What, the, what you've got to do to earn your four marks is to complete the table by stating two other types of bones and examples of them. So any two other types of bone can go here with the appropriate example over here, earns you four marks, which would be a lovely, easy question. Here are some of the things you could do. Obviously, there could be any number of long bone examples you gave. Um, you could put tarsals for short bones. You could put cranial, cranium or cranial bones for flat bones. It doesn't mean this is the only option that's correct. Any appropriate responses will be Correct, but that's a nice four marker. Here's one. Name two examples of a flat bone. Easy, lovely two marks. Describe the function of a flat bone for another two marks, giving a total of four. Here's the mark scheme. So, of course, all the other examples you could give. Cranium, the cranial bones. Now, your pelvis is not just one bone, actually. A bit like the cranium is not just one bone. There's lots of flat bones fused together with fibrous joints. That's also true of the pelvis. The pelvis is made up of, actually, I think it's four bones, not three, but the ilium and ischium are perhaps the main ones to learn. These are two bones that are fused together as a fibrous joint to make up your pelvis. So that's good knowledge. Scapula is your shoulder blade. The sternum is your breastbone. Your ribs, of course, are flat bones as well, even though they they don't feel like they should be. They are flattish. That's any of those for two marks. And then the function of flat bones is to protect vital organs or for muscle attachment because they're a big flat surface area, large surface area. Lastly, I think this is the last one I have. Um, explain the function of short bones for two marks. So. They are the function of short bones is to be strong, to provide support, stability, to deal with lots of weight. And the reason that they can do that to earn your other mark 
is because of their structure. Remember, they're cuboid in shape. They're small, compact. Um, they are uh, the same length and width and height. OK, so it's asking you what's their job and how can they achieve that job for your two marks. So we've covered um, within D3 location of skeletal bones. We've done the red content here, the five types of bone.